He's installing a 2JZ water pump on my S13. Uh, yesterday was Pro-Am round one, and my car never got hot. And all my cooling mods are a triple pass radiator, electric water pump on a 2JZ rear housing, uh, a 160 thermostat, uh, WRX fans, just because I had them laying around, and like light ducting. Whole track day, my 2JZ, sorry, my 1JZ never got over 200 degrees. Never, the whole time. My, my car will cool all the way down to 169 degrees, and then it'll go up to 190, and it's just, it's the best. A 2JZ, 1JZ will never overheat with these mods with a front mount radiator. It's literally the what you need to do if you track your 2J or 1J. So here's the video and enjoy. So today we're gonna take that water pump off, which is a 2J water pump on a 1J, and installing this. This is a electric water pump. This pulley is just an idler. It doesn't do anything. And that wheel is powered by electricity. So let's try to install this. So we gotta take the pulley off, the belts off, and I don't wanna take the timing belt off, but I probably have to. So let's go for it. And let's remember how the belt goes. Okay. Might as well just take the pulley off. You see I, could paint, I painted the face so it looked better. But now it's garbage or spare. Just pulled off the upper timing cover. It's dirty, but the wrinkle finished. It looks super good. One year later, now there's three bolts for this uh, tensioner. Yeah, one-handed. These little screwdrivers are always handy. Yeah. Ready for the moment of truth? Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, put the gar in gear. Had my mom push on the brake as hard as she could. Shitty Duralast uh, torque wrench. And this breaker bar, let's see how long it is. That breaker bar slipped over the torque wrench, broke this loose. That's insane. This is like supposed to be like torque to like 200 and something. It's insanity. But I got it. I'm not screwed. I can actually continue to work on my car. But that's funny. Wow. Pulley last year and we had to use a puller and I just been working it with two hands. I probably won't be able to do it with one hand now. No, I can't. Check it out. I literally pulled a 1JZ crank off with my hands, which is kind of pretty rare. So we're getting close to that water pump because it goes into the timing cover. It's annoying, but this is now garbage. I got that timing mark, this timing mark, and that timing mark, all good. This big nipple here, I'm not sure if I could sneak that through, so I actually do have to untime the motor. But we're at top dead center, so it shouldn't be a big issue. Fully, very gently decompressed the piston in here. And now it's decompressed. That was kind of nerve wracking, but I think it's safe. Uh, those two go there. Pop this guy out with a 10 mil Allen head. Now we have full access to the front half that's all this is replacing is the front half. So I've already, this is a very expensive kind of setup if you have a 1J because 
last year I converted this to a 2JZ pump. So that's like the whole back half and the whole front half is a 2J. Now that electric pump only works with the 2JZ water pump. So you have to have the back conversion to run this pump. So you get like a $150 water pump and a $400 electric water pump and you can have this set up, which is super expensive, but I'm tired of overheating. So this should be the last straw. Hopefully. Last bolt right there. No. Are you serious? So there's one more bolt. You want to guess where it is? Right behind there. And I am not taking that pull that this pulley off and I'm not taking this off for sure. So I'm gonna cut this. Um I don't want to, but I'm not taking that off. And he, let's say a water pump does fail some re for some reason at a drift event. This is gonna take so much longer if I just cut that corner off. But I wish I didn't have to. And a lot of drifters don't even run timing covers. So, yes, there's dust going to be in there. Dust gets in there, there, but oh well. Let's see how it works. There we have it, folks. Cut it out just a little bit. I'll spray paint it a little bit to clean it up a little bit so it doesn't rust and blow all the air out. Like that. The old gasket off. Now that's garbage. See the thermostat in there. But yeah, no regrets. You can see I painted it. Couple quick differences. Um, this has a hose. See if it fails. I think that's what these seep holes are, but there's no hose. Um, this holds the center for the crank, crank center, the end plug. This it bolts like right there. That isn't on here, which sucks, but it's no big deal. This is what this looks like. Um, this is the manual one. It has the nice metal fins. And that one's a nice maybe billet. It's machined out of aluminum for sure. I gotta clean all this old gasket material off with some Scotch Brite. I haven't worked with Toyota stuff, so hopefully this comes off pretty easily. So here's the new gaskets part number for a 2J. Uh, I matched it up and it looks the same, so I'm time to throw it on up the best that I could. There's stuff up here which I don't think that will matter much as long as the surface area is clean. But yeah. So it looks like the gasket lines up perfectly. I'm time to throw a couple bolts in so it, li so it stays lined up and then throw it in. So all the bolts are tight and it's on. There's the idler. So I'm gonna have to like zip tie this to something or something. So the timing dot lines up, lines up. I think we're okay to pull the pin. All right, pulled it. Last clip, you saw me pull the pin. I checked it and actually 
my cam gears were a little off. So pull the pin again. Make sure it has tension. And I'm gonna spin it over a third time to make sure it's perfectly in time. So perfectly in time, Allen key's tight, these guys are tight. Now I can take the crank pulley off, or the crank bolts off and put the timing cover back on and continue to get to work. Great I'm doing, it's a fluid dampener. I went with this one compared to the other one and I forgot the brand of it, but there's no maintenance with this one. The other one you have to get serviced and it just bolts on. And these, the reason I'm upgrading is because it will uh, dampen better than stock at high RPM. But the rubber on this dampener, once the high horsepower Jay-Z's, they literally throw these. Uh, I'll probably insert a clip right here if I can find it. But yeah, they literally throw these out the car. So that could like take out a radiator, break something, or it's actually pretty dangerous. And this is one piece. There's like a silicone fluid in there that uh, dampens everything. But yeah, the key rings uh, lined up. And I read to do this online because if you don't really know, you don't know which one's the timing mark. So it looks like this line, I'm gonna paint it. Paint it like blue. It's a Subaru color, it's a daily color. My super daily. I'm gonna paint that one blue so I have a good timing mark. So I colored in that one line just so I know it's when I have it on. So I had to trim this. I don't know if it's because it's on a one one J, and you don't have to trim it on a two J. The timing covers might be a little different. But now I can now I can fit it. Like this is so fat that I couldn't fit it before, but now I can. The dowel pin. And this is pressing it on, and I feel no resistance, which is good. Like, this is very easy. So, first thing I notice... in the timing cover. I know this one is distorted a little bit, but I'm wondering if I should take the pulley back off and grind it down. I don't know. Because I don't think it's rubbing hard enough that it will go away anytime soon. Do you see why that I put that, uh, painted that? Because like, you, how are you supposed to tell which one it is? But put it at zero and the upper ones line up. So that's why I painted that. Okay, now the upper cover. And got this cover. I forgot this, so I had to take that back off, but now we got this cover, that's tight. You can see it coming back together. I need to torque this later, so it's just snug right now. Um, I'm upgrading the alternator because I'm running a big single fuel pump I'm using a water pump that probably will be running 100% of the time. I don't know if I'm going to control this to ignition and let my thermostat do the cooling, or if I can do it all fancy and have my uh, standalone turn it on and off whenever it sees certain temperatures. And then here's the pigtail coming off of it. And two wires. And it comes with the wiring harness somewhere over there. Here's the wiring harness, just plugs right in. Comes with a little fuse holder and positive and negative. Should be pretty easy. There we go, we got our little dampener brace back on. We got our belt on. And like I said, this is just a pulley. So it doesn't, it's not really gonna matter that much, but since this belt isn't driving that mechanical uh, pulley, should pick up like 30 horsepower, right? No, maybe like two. But yeah, so now I just have to wire it up to a relay, which I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet. But that's pretty much the install for a electric water pump, 
with the 2JZ rear housing on a 1JZ VVTi motor. And like I said, we had to trim right there. And that was pretty much the only thing. And I got new wheels for that. So it's not all stanced out with stretch tires. They're 17 with a, like a 225-65. And I had to like sledgehammer in right there and the pinch weld back in there to even turn. Like it's super tight fitment. So that's gonna do it for this install. It was just a quick water pump. I'm really excited to test this and there's a month, exactly one month until round one. So I'd like to get the car done within three weeks, dynoed and then a practice day and then round one. Should be exciting and stressful. All right, see you in the next one.